Thank you for listening to this message from Simple Truth Gospel with Kiria, a teaching ministry that teaches the Word of God verse by verse to help you grow in grace and in, morning, in the knowledge friends, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today we will continue our study through the book of Hebrews. We will cover chapter 5. Before we continue, let's have a word of prayer together. Father, we all agree as touching this today. We thank you for another opportunity for us to gather to study your precious word. The entrance of your word gives life and it gives understanding to the simple. Where with all shall a young man cleanse his way only by taking heed according to your word? We pray that by the Holy Spirit you will teach everyone listening today simultaneously. Give us revelation, knowledge, understanding. Give us the light always to understand and know what you are telling us in the word. We always propose not to be hearers only, but also doers of the word of God. But we pray that you will help us to do this by the power of your Holy Spirit. Father, I pray that you will help us to study to show ourselves approved. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightfully dividing the word of truth. Help us not to remain spiritual babies. Give us the courage, the ability to let go our feeding bottles and uh, develop some teeth so we can be able to chew real meat, the meat of the word of God. You've done so many things for us. We are so grateful. With one voice, we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven, in the name of Jesus Christ. And everybody said, Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. My good friends, we will continue through the uh, book of uh, Hebrews. Today we will cover chapter 5. But before we continue, let me tell you about this story that I heard. A man went to buy a horse. And uh, while he was there looking out, he, he saw a beautiful horse that he won. He wanted to buy, and uh, he spoke to the guy who was selling the horse, said, I want this particular horse right here. And the guy said, uh, 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 let me tell you something about this horse. It is trained different from other horses here. Uh, this horse is uh, trained with uh, a, a special command. So if you want this horse to take off, all you got to say is praise the Lord. And if you want it to stop, all you got to say is, Amen. So the man got excited. He said, I can handle it, a uh, piece of cake. And then he bought the horse and he took it home. On his way going home, this horse got distracted by something. And the horse took off out of control. And as the horse was running, it got close to an edge of a cliff. And while he, the horse was running, the man was thinking about the commands. What, what do I say to make this uh, horse stop now? What do I say? And all of a sudden, he remembered. He said, uh, uh, Amen. And the horse came to a complete stop. Oh, he took a deep breath. And he said, Praise the Lord. <laughs> and you know what happened. So what we learn from here, uh, uh, we are reminded today the importance of uh, knowing the word of God. As children of God, we are not supposed to be gazing and saying, I think the word of God says this, or I think the word of God says that. Uh, just like someone who said, uh, the Bible said God helps those who help themselves. But that's not what the Bible says. It was Benjamin Franklin who said that. As a matter of fact, what he said is opposite of what the word of God says. Because uh, in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, 
Paul says, for when I am weak, then I am strong. So he is made strong when he's weak by the power of God. And also, the uh, Bible tells us that uh, uh, God uses the foolish things of this word to confound the wise. The weak things of this word to confound those that are strong. With, with this, we go, we're just going to go ahead and, uh, and uh, continue. In verse 1, for every high priest taken from among men is appointed for men in the things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices of sins. He can have compassion on those who are ignorant and going astray, since he himself is also subject to weakness. Because of this, he is required as for the people so also for himself to offer sacrifices for sins. And no man takes this honor to himself, but he who is called by God, just as Aaron was. The book of, uh, uh, of Hebrews was written to show the superiority of Jesus Christ if you would give this book a theme, it would be Jesus is better. Or you would say the center of it all is Jesus. So in this section, we are talking about the superiority of Jesus Christ over the high priest. So now the high priest, the earthly high priest uh, was chosen by God. You don't wake up one morning and say, I am having the feeling to become a priest or a high priest. No. You must come from the tribe of Levi. Not only that, but from the family of Aaron. In the Old Testament, the high priest offered sacrifices. He will offer gifts sacrifices and also sin sacrifices. Gift sacrifices are things like a, a, a drink offering and a, a grain offerings and a, sin sacrifices are things like um, burnt offerings and a, a trespass offerings. On the day of Yom Kippur, which is the atonement day, the high priest who will get into the Holy of Holies, which is where they had the Ark of the Covenant. He will go in there twice that day. First of all, he will go in with the blood of an animal to offer a sacrifice for himself. Because himself is also a sinner. This is the reason why the high priest or the priest, they don't... Uh, uh, condemn other people when they show up with uh, an animal for a sin offering or a burnt offering. They don't say, you, again, you, I know, you, again, you are a sinner. No, they don't, because they are sinners themselves. And the second time he will get into the uh, a holy of holies will be with the blood of a uh, an animal to sprinkle on the mercy seat just to cover the sins of the people for one year. And this is what the earthly high priest did. We continue in verse um, 5. So also Christ did not glorify himself to become high priest, but it was he who said to him, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. As he also said in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with vehement cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death and was heard because of his godly fear. So now, we will talk about our high priest, great high priest, and that's Jesus Christ. 
we just talked about the earthly high priest so let's talk about our own great high priest now the same way that god chose the earthly high priest in the old testament from the family of aaron so also god chose jesus christ to become our great high priest from the order of Melchizedek. It talks about something here about the prayer that Jesus Christ prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane when he sweated that great drops of blood. Remember that prayer when Jesus was in the garden, he prayed and asked the Father if he can take the cup the cup of suffering from him. But towards the end of that prayer, he said, not my own will, but your will be done. And here it tells us that God heard that prayer. What prayer did God hear? The prayer Jesus said, not my own will, but your will God will be done. So God's will was what happened. Jesus Christ went to the cross. It was the will of the Father that he went to the cross. In Revelation, we are told that Jesus Christ was the Lamb's land from the foundation of the earth. So it was the will of the Father from the foundation of the earth that Jesus Christ would be that Lamb that would be slain for the whole world. Because he was allowed to go through the sufferings of death, he became that one who qualified as our great high priest. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We continue in verse 9, 8. Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by things which he suffered. And having been perfected, he became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him. Called by God as high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek, of whom we have much to say and heard to explain, since you have become dull of hearing. We're going to talk about Jesus Christ here. Um... He's telling us that Jesus Christ learned obedience through suffering. Remember in Philippians chapter 2, uh, it says that uh, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but he let go the garments of his glory, his own reputation, became and he came in the form of a man, just like you and I. And it tells us that he became obedient even unto death. As a result of this, God highly exalted him and gave him a, an honor and glorified him. He gave him a name, that name that is above all names, that at the mention of the name of Jesus Christ, Every being in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, they must bow, and every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is God to the glory of the Father. It is because of this process, his obedience unto death, that uh, he was able to bring salvation not only to you and I who are Christians, but to the whole world. That anyone, regardless of your background, ethnicity, regardless of your age, if you will take hold of that which he did by faith and ask him to come into your life, be your Lord and your Savior, you are automatically, automatically catapulted from the kingdom of darkness and death into the kingdom of light and salvation. This is what he accomplished for us. Let's talk about suffering in the life of a Christian. God allows suffering 
in our lives. It is through suffering that uh, uh, he moves us, that he strengthens us, that he makes us better. Through trials and tribulation, for him God loves, he will chastise. Whom the Father loves, he will chastise. When we go through sufferings and through trials and tribulations as Christians, we must have the consciousness that it is part of our Christian package. Are you hearing me? <laughs> it is part of the package. We don't pick and choose what part of the package that we, we are going to receive. The Bible says those who live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. It's part of the package. I have not seen anyone who's claiming this before, who will lift up their hands in prayer and say, Father, you know your word says those who live God in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. I pray that you, you send me abundance of persecution today. I'm expecting them, oh God, please send them, send them. <laughs> I have not seen anyone claiming this part before. Neither have I seen anyone claiming the part that Jesus Christ said that uh, in the world you will have tribulations, but be of good cheer for I have overcome the world. I haven't seen anyone that says, Jesus, you said in the world we will have tribulation. Please send now tribulations my way. But these things are promises in the word of God. You see, we claim the ones that we want to claim, but when it comes to these ones, we try to uh, hide ourselves from them. Suffering to someone who is not a Christian is seen as evil. It's seen as something that is wrong. But it should not be the case with us Christians. We should see it as a necessity, uh, something needed to accomplish a, a good Christian work. That's the way that we should see it. In James chapter uh, 1, if we read from verse 2 all the way to verse 4, James says, count it all joy when you go through diverse trials or temptations, knowing that the trying of your faith works patience. Now let patience have her complete work in you, that you may be perfect and entirely wanting nothing. He says, uh, let patience allow it to work through you. He says, at the end, you will be complete and you will be perfect and you will be wanting not, nothing. So it means that is uh, something we benefit when we allow ourselves to go through trials and tribulations. In a parallel passage, Paul says, we glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulations works patience and patience character and character hope. So I see another benefit here that tribulations bring. He says it works patience. <clears throat> and patience is the same thing as perseverance. And not only that it works perseverance, but we also get character from it. My good friends, there is a character that we can only develop if we go through suffering. There is something that we can only learn if we allow ourselves to go through sufferings. Now, when we are going through trials and tribulations as Christians, we don't pray and say, God, take this suffering away from me. Take these trials away from me. I don't want to face them any longer. Rather, our prayer should be, God, please show me what I should learn from this suffering. Please strengthen me that I'll be able to overcome it and take it all the way to the end. Whenever we are facing trials and tribulations also as Christians, we ought to uh, take it with joy. We don't murmur, we don't grumble, we don't complain, we don't scream. We take it with joy with a joyful attitude. And uh, a, a, a Peter has told us, he says, therefore let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their soul to him in doing good as to a faithful creator. 
So we trust God as we go through trials in this life. The reason why we trust God is because we are limited as human beings. We don't know tomorrow. We don't see into the future. And God sees the end from the beginning. There are things that are, we don't understand the reason why they happen. And uh, because we're going through that process at that moment, uh, we don't even know that uh, in uh, two years, two years down the road, uh, what we went through today would be the thing that will bring us uh, blessings and the success and victories down the road. So as a child of God, during your trials and your tribulations, it's very important to commit to memory, to your heart. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. All things, uh, 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 the, 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 the verse that tells us that, uh, that God uh, uh, will always see us through. He will always see us through. All things work together for our own good. So, if we know that regardless of what we go through, that God has made a promise to us, that all things work together for our own good, then it is uh, a better thing to relax, expecting that regardless of what happens, it's going to work out for my own good. You remember the story of Joseph. Even while when his brothers sold him out, even while, while he was in Egypt, even while he was at Potiphar's house and he was wrongly accused, even while when he went to prison, even when he was forgotten. But someday, God rescued him. It was through him that so many people were kept alive because he endured sufferings. The suffering that he endured was a means to save so many people, his family members, and other people around. So look at it in a long, in a long, in a, in a, in a long term. That's the attitude we should have when we go through trials and tribulations as children of God. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are now in verse, uh, and also he talked about Melchizedek. Uh, he said that he's not going to say much about it today and as a matter of fact he will tell us more once we get to chapter 7 so be patient in the next two weeks we're going to talk about Melchizedek in details blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in verse 12 he says for though by this time you ought to be teachers you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God and you have come to need milk and solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age, that is, those who by reason of use have their senses excised to discern both good and uh, evil. Now we delve into a different direction. And we will begin to talk about the importance of growing in the knowledge of the word of God after you got born again. And not only growing in that knowledge, but also applying that knowledge in your life. For just knowing <coughs> excuse me, it's not enough. The things we know, we must also apply them in our lives to get the benefits. Remember, I told you from uh, the beginning that this letter was written to Messianic Jews. And uh, these are the Jews who came to faith in Christ Jesus. But because uh, of uh, persecution, trials, and tribulations, they began to drift back to Judaism. And uh, they began to participate again in 
animal sacrifices as a means of salvation. So they start going back again to their human traditions and uh, culture and uh, rituals. And uh, as a result of this, some of them were syncretizing works with grace. Instead of uh, believing in Jesus Christ alone as their savior, they are trying to add something to him. Remember that one thing that will keep you a baby Christian for a long time is when you combine works with grace. So this is what these people were doing at this point. And the author of the book of Hebrews said to them, grow up. <laughs> That's what he says. He says, grow up. Remember, he's not saying this only to them. He's saying the same to you and myself. As Christians, we must grow up. He says to them, he says, get past the stage of the fundamental principles of the oracles of God. Now, what is this stage he's talking about here? The basics. Jesus Christ is God. He died for our sins. He was raised from the dead. He's now at the right hand of the Father. He's coming again. And he's going to raise us up. This is just the basics, the fundamental principles. So he says, don't stop here. I want you now to get past it. In other words, he says, let go your feeding bottles. There are Christians who are still sucking on feeding bottles. After two years, they will get born again. Five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. 50 years, they are still holding onto their feeding bottles that is filled with milk with their two hands. They are holding too tight that you can, they don't want to let go. He says, let go of that feeding bottle. It is time for you to develop spiritual teeth. So now you can chew on a real steak, real meat. Now, remember, this is just an analogy. What he's talking about here is that let go of the fundamental principles. Now build upon those principles. Now begin to chew the real meat of the word of God. It means diversify. No more. Start to show yourself approved. Learn other things. Do not stop there so that you can grow spiritually every day through the word of God. This is the message that he's saying, not only to those that he wrote this book to, when he wrote this book, but also to you and I who are Christians. You see, to be mature in your Christian work, it's got nothing to do with age. No, it has nothing to do with age. Someone once said that Christian maturity is measured by what it takes to steal your joy from you. Let me give you an example. You went to a church on a Sunday morning. And after the service, you got into your car, praising God, singing blessings unto his holy name. And as soon as you got into the highway, somebody cuts you off. <laughs> and right away, your joy is stolen. <laughs> the joy that you had a moment ago flew out of the window. And now you want to chase him or her all over town. <laughs> Try to find out why they cut you off. That's what, I'm, that's what he's saying here. So we have to continue the process of growing through the word of God. Remember, you cannot come to the end of it in this side of heaven. It's impossible. This is the reason why the Holy Spirit of God will always continue the work of sanctification in us through the word of God. You don't come to an end, but we continue to grow. We add something to what we know already, and then we add something more. Then we add something more. Then we add something more. Because the Bible says the entrance of his word gives light. It gives also understanding to the simple one. So the more we look, the more we know, and the more we apply what we know, the more we become that which we know. 
there uh, we all with an open face as in the mirror beholding the glory of God are changed into the same image from glory to glory even by the Spirit of God. So there has to be a growth going on to the Word of God. So it is something important that we make it a point of duty. We must be committed to studying the Word of God. We have to put our nose in it. It is very important that you have a plan. A plan on when and how to study the Word of God. Now, on how means that you, you want to have a, a, a study plan that you maybe divide the Bible. If you go to the internet, it's very easy. You can find a, a Bible study plan that will tell you how many chapters of what book to study so that you can cover the entire Bible in one year. It is available. It's not something difficult to do. Now, when to study, the Word of God should be an ultimate priority in our life. You know, we don't wait till we come back from work tired. And now we're going to open the Bible and then uh, 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 and look in there for maybe five, ten minutes and then we fall asleep. It's not something that we should read to make us fall asleep. No, this is not a sleeping pill. So we have to make it the first thing in the morning. When you're still agile, when you are still active <laughs> and oriented, <laughs> it's when to open the word. And you want to start your day with the word of God. You know, inviting God into the day's affairs and, and uh, asking him to be your guide today, the, the, the light to see the wisdom not to make unnecessary mistakes that day, we start by asking God to take full control. As children of God, it is something that we must learn how to do and continue to do. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, there are some Christians or some people who are going around and looking for a place where they can be entertained. You know, uh, lately there are some places now that have turned the house of God into entertainment grounds, and this is not right. The Word of God ought to be a place where the Word of God is taught. The people are helped to grow maturely, uh, and people grow spiritually. It's not a place of entertainment. I'm not saying that we should not make preaching the word of God something that is uh, 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 enjoying and inviting. That's not my point. But you know what I'm saying. The word of God, the, the, the house of God also should not be a place of uh, chasing after miracles. There are Christians who are looking for miracles. Remember the order is after the word of God is preached. Now miracles will happen to confirm the word of God. It's not the other way around. So if you're going looking for places where they are doing miracles, check, sit down and think about it. Those miracles... Are they confirmation of God's words? Or are they just miracles? It will help you a lot. Remember that because a miracle is taking place doesn't confirm the presence of God in that place. For Satan is able to turn himself into an angel of light. And even his ministers, ministers of righteousness. So do not be easily deceived by miracles, signs and wonders. I want you to be like the Bereans. Remember the Bereans, when they heard Paul preach the gospel to them, Paul compared them to the saints from Thessalonica. He said, the Bereans, we are more noble in that they received the 
word of God with readiness of heart. And they daily, they search the scriptures to see if those things were so. You know, with Paul the Apostle, with all his revelation. <laughs> After he taught the Bereans, they said, we're going to go and double check if what Paul said was so. Because they had the Old Testament scriptures with them. So they went and found out. So this is what I encourage you to do. Even though you go to church and you hear the teachers, including myself, I want you to have the habit of going to the word of God and making sure that the things you heard are in conformity with the word of God. Very, very important. This is the only way that you can spot out heresies that are spoken by heretics. This is the only way that you will be able to spot out when scriptures are taken out of context. This is the only way that you can say, no, for sure, this is not what the word of God says. So I encourage you, my good friends, to let go today, the milk. <laughs> Concentrate on the steak. That's where the real thing is. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I have come to the end of today's teaching. If you are not yet a Christian, or maybe you wandered away from Christ, today is another opportunity for you to make it right, to come back to Jesus, to be born again. To be born again means that you come to Jesus, acknowledging yourself as a sinner. And you believe that Jesus Christ died for your sin and that God raised him from the dead and now you ask him to come into your life, be your Lord and your Savior, and you start a relationship with him. So in other words, you let go whatever you think that you are, you are doing good. Your self-righteousness, your good works, your, your merits, let them go. They cannot save you. The way to come first into the kingdom of God is faith in what Jesus Christ did and faith in what he did alone. After you are born again, then the Holy Spirit of God that is now one with your spirit will empower you to do those good things. Remember, those good things will not save you. There are verification that you are now a child of God. The only way to come to Christ, to be born again, is through Jesus Christ. We don't have alternatives. Jesus made it very clear to us in John 14, 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Peter tells us that there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved except the name of Jesus Christ. If you're hearing my voice today, think about it. The time is very short. Today, about 150,000 people died in the world. Some of them were procrastinating. Some of them were making plans the day that they would receive Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. And now it's too late for them. Any life that is not found in Jesus Christ will end up in eternal hell. Hell is a real place where those who refuse to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior will spend their eternity. A place of torture and torment where there is the absence of God. You don't want to spend your eternity in that place. As long as you are still breathing right now and you can hear my voice, it's not too late. Secure your eternal uh, uh, a place now while you are still alive. Do not put it off any longer. Don't say, let me go get my acts together and then I will come and I will be born again. No, you don't have the ability. Come as you are. When Jesus Christ catches his own fish, he doesn't leave them the same way. He cleans them up. 
through the sanctification of the Holy Spirit of God. The day that you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Remember, it is you who is going to make this decision because God created you and I as free mortal agents. He gave us the right to make choices for ourselves. And if we don't, nobody's going to do it for us. Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone opens the door, and I will come in and I will eat with him and he will eat with me also. If you're hearing that knock today in your heart, would you consider opening that door for the King of Kings to come in today? Would you consider to make him your Lord and your Savior? Would you consider to secure a place of eternity in heaven? Jesus says, unless you believe that I am he, the Messiah, you will die in your sins. There is condemnation right now to those who are not born again. They are already condemned, saying that they do not believe in the name of the only begotten Son of God. You don't want to be condemned, my good friends. So I'm going to lead you now in a very short prayer. Pray this prayer with all your heart. Minutes today. Minutes. And right now, you will become a new creation in Christ Jesus. You will now have that place called heaven secured. If you would die right now, you will be in heaven with the Father God. Pray with me. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe he is your son. He died for my sins. You raised him from the dead on the third day. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you this day to come into my life, be my Lord and my Savior. I believe that I am now born again. I am a child of God. My name is written in the Lamb's book of life. I turn away from my sin. Thank you, Father, for the precious gift of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, congratulations. Welcome into the kingdom of God. Please find the Bible-based church so that you can become a member, so that you can be taught the word of God, for it is only through the word of God that you can grow in your spiritual work. I want to use this opportunity thanking our partners who are all over the world. Those that are helping us to spread the gospel through their prayers, their financial support, and through their services to this ministry. If you would like to join us, please go to our website. It is kuim.org. Remember, only those who hear the word of God and they do the word of God are those who get the benefits of the word of God. I encourage you to always be a doer of the word of God. As I pray for you this day, my good friends, may the Lord bless you and always be with you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, the peace that passes every understanding. Peace, even in the midst of your trials. May he open doors of opportunities for you. May he heal your bodies if you are sick. I pray that he will give you wisdom and sound mind. Wisdom to make the right choices so that you don't make mistakes. I pray that he will set your feet upon that rock. That is higher than you. And I pray that he will bless the rest of your week today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everybody said, Amen. Oh, good friends of mine, regardless of your situation, the troubles that you can see and hear, always have confidence and trust God. And know that surely there is an end and your expectations will never be cut off. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O Baruch Hashem Adonai. Salalabot, Melebot, in the crystal lacosco bradoste fala astanamato. Bene englendem suroku bradeste caralabata eskele le pradoste. Miandu pe parabote, cuje engla scalapado, siri kira alafadot. 
Belle, belle, tu colo bracada, singe, neke le predeste, ida la falo, sendem et le ble, unglo scoparot. Adjari crona soro croto. Thank you for listening to this message from Simple Truth Gospel with Kiria, a teaching ministry that teaches the Word of God verse by verse to help you grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ.